our own little push. This means it's not. Well, actually, we're not going to end the recording session here. Oh, Desmond. Oh, subject zero. Woo. I'm going to be quiet. Timestamp August 16th, 2013. The following audio clips were selected from over 160 hours of reel to reel tape found in the residence of the late Dr. Warren Vidic following his murder in December 2012. Hey, According to labels on the tape's canisters, these recordings were made over a 14-month period between 1980 and 1981 without the consent of their primary subject, Mrs. Eileen Bach, a colleague of Dr. Vidic's and the originator of Abstergo's surrogate initiative. Mrs. Bach is now deceased. It should be stated unequivocally that Dr. Vidic made these recordings illegally and of his own volition using wiretaps and hidden microphones. That Abstergo Industries had no knowledge of his actions and disavows any responsibility uh -huh. for them. That's nice to know, you blind pieces of shit. And we're live. Capacitators at full. Ease the signal in. A little more. You feel anything? Don't be timid. Double it. No, we're taking it easy. 20%. 30. Eileen, go easy. We're six past yesterday. And boost the inputs. Too risky. Not if we split the I.O. signals. 25%. Ease up. Okay. Oh, okay. There. I see something. I... What is it? Mein Gott. I hear talking. You're... you're okay? Ja, ich höre Stimmen. It's... it's German. My name is Miriam Kurz. I see a light. It's cold. Ich werde nichts sagen. There's a man with me. Mehr werde ich nicht sagen. Keep an eye on your vitals. My name is Miriam Kurz, and I'm a Navajo. This Hitler's Zwang, der macht uns klein. Noch liegen wir in Ketten. Doch einmal werden wir wieder frei. Wir werden die Ketten schon brechen. Eileen. Denn unsere Fäuste, die sind hart, ja. Und die Messer sitzen lose. Für die I can't translate that, so. Kämpfe, Navajos. <laughs> Switch off. Powering down. Kämpf, Navajos. Get her out of there. <laughs> God. Oxygen! Open the valve! No. <coughs> no, Satish, I'm I'm fine, really. Quit the right, I'll be right back, Just guys. breathe. Yeah. Better? Yes. Yes, thank you. Did we get something? It'll take a while to pass. What did you see? It wasn't just seeing. It was feeling. Being. I was I was scared. You were shouting in German? I think I was in Germany. I was in Germany, Satish. <laughs> Good morning. Well rested? Exhausted. Yesterday was an incredible find. Seems so. What did it feel like? It's foggy, but I, I relived the memories of a young German woman. Early 20s, I think. A man was interrogating me, looming over me and asking questions. He was shouting, but I was shouting back. And then this, this poem just came out, like a chant. Fascinating. I'm eager for you to hear the tape. Is it ready? Yes, we transliterated the data onto an audio file. It took all night to process the language. Spool it up. Of course. Have a seat. Judging by the subject matter and the setting, I'd say you landed somewhere in Germany in the 1940s, one or two generations back. During the war, I'd imagine. 1940s Germany? <laughs> that would be Miriam Kurtz, my ex-husband's mother. So she's not related to you in any way? God, I hope not. I'd hate to find out my ex-husband is also my brother. <laughs> well, if it was Miriam Kurtz, then we hit a home run. You tapped into someone else's bloodline entirely. <laughs> Should we celebrate? We'll listen first. Surrogate initiative, test session 23, July 29th, 1980. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. It's a little garbled at first. This is you settling into the memory. Louder. My name is Miriam Kurtz, and I am Navajo. Where did you last see the artifact? Who holds it now? I'll say nothing. I've told you all I know. I don't believe that is true. Yes. Who has the artifact? Hitler's dictates make us small and are bound in chains. But one day again, we shall walk tall. No binds with us restrain. <sighs> Enough! For hard are our fists, yes, and knives at our wrists for you to be free. Navajos, lay siege! 
Huh. And that's where we pull you out. Whoa. What would it take to get a visual render of all that? Mm, months, unfortunately. It took 13 hours just to process the audio. Visual takes much longer. But Vidic is able to record audio and visual in real time. How does he do it? His subjects are exploring their own genetic memories. That requires much less processing power. Oh, hold on, sorry. Eileen here. Hello. You have 10 o'clock in Lillian's office. It's 10.13 now. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Tell her I'll be right there, and... Tell her we have some good news. No problem. You in trouble? Ugh, the monthly progress report. I'm trying to be honest about our progress, but no matter how much I polish our facts, Warren Vidic swoops in, promising the moon for pennies, and gets ten times the funding for his Animus project. Well, we are using his Animus technology. He's the foundation. We are the skyscraper. Which is why he should be a tech lead, not a project director. <sighs> good work, Satish. Ain't that nice. At least she was nice enough to say thank you. Sorry about that. I ended up returning because I ended up getting harassed. Yeah. It's incredible it's footage. footage. Really. Clear and vivid. And the subject was synced for a full 62 minutes. Came out speaking French after his last session. Passably fluent. And with full recall of everything he'd gone through. Sorry. Sorry I'm late. I was reviewing some data. It's fine. Warren was just telling me about his first subject, Mr... No names. Call him Subject One. Confidentiality. And how about you, Eileen? What's your good news? Well... We did it. We synced with an unembedded memory outside the bloodline. That's a first. Really? Satish was able to process the audio today. A short clip. You can hear it for yourself. Only audio? No real-time memory feeds like Vidic has? Well, that's the difficulty with surrogate genetic memory data. Because I'm viewing memories not embedded in my own DNA, we can't rely on my cognitive faculties to help me process the signal. All we can do is record the raw data and transliterate it later. Hold on. You're running this experiment on yourself? I am. It's going well. I don't like the sound of that. Look, the sample I'm using the DNA comes from my own son. It's safer this way. Ah, good thinking. 50% of my son's DNA is also mine, which reduces the danger by a huge margin. Meaning, I can now explore the memories of people who aren't directly related to me, on his father's side. But for brief periods of time, I imagine. Right. Just a minute or two, so far. But we're getting there. Come by the lab and listen for yourself. I will, when I have a moment. Unfortunately, work beckons, ladies. That man is colder than a San Francisco summer. Stay focused, Eileen. You both have important work to do. Obviously. But my work requires his animus technology. I feel a little caged in. That's collaboration, Eileen. It's how science works. I shouldn't have to remind you. I know. I'm just... tired. Stop by and see us today. We have a lot to share. If not today, then this week sometime. Thank you. Well, due to at least being, uh, me being distracted and had to at least leave real quick, that must have been like, that was a pretty long audio uh, log. So, uh, I'll, uh, let's actually try to get started on working on taking care of all these computers. Since um, we can't actually be considered framed anymore due to uh, Mr. Roberts, aka John, being taken care of already, this means this is a good time for us to play around a bit. And explore. God damn it. Eh. Eh. God damn it. No. Uh, yeah, actually, no. Let's go there. 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 Oh, God damn it. Hmm. Sure. Ooh, I actually got it through that. Okay. I'm cool. I'm cool with that. Please be Desmond. Please be another Desmond file. I don't know why I'm so, like, entranced on trying to at least get more information about Desmond. I don't know. I'm just getting like a false hope of anything of Desmond's. Oh, unlock the secrets of our past. Blah, blah, blah. Just, eh, just random gibberish about animuses. AKA, the animus from pre. Oh, look! Uh, screenshots from, let's see. Yeah, it looks like from the multiplayer of Assassin's Creed 3. Um, Connor's dad and Connor himself all the way at the end. Okay. 
Wait, wait. And let's see. Ooh, and some of the liberation. Well, most of it, uh, eh. Oh, it was the prototype, okay. So, 24 out of the 33. Let's actually finish this. I know, I should try at least work on. Let's see, if I recall correctly. Which I don't, shit. There's supposed to be a level 3 somewhere. Or I'm just missing one. Because I know that we can head down the stairs, take care of that. Since John is dead, we can't actually ask for any higher levels. So we got to be careful about that. Well, actually, thanks I mean, <clears throat> thanks to John, we can actually start hacking without needing to worry about anyone trying to, like, kill us. Or manipulate our body. Or at least trying to resurrect Juno in our body. Well, I think that's going to happen sooner or later because it's... Somehow it's gonna end up like that. Uh, whatever. Alright, thank you, John. I'll use it to the best extent. Alright, gotta do it in multitasking parts. Eh. Okay, I'll go with that. Eh. Gotta go with 2000. Alright, go back a little. Nope. Damn it. Mm. Too many factors. De ble ble. De. Twenty-four, nope. Three sixty-seven. Wait, three twenty-six. Damn it! How am I doing this wrong? I'm already fucking up. No. Nope. Let's go for a higher variable. If it's higher, you go lower. If you go lower, you go. You push it a little higher. Or I'm just being dumb. Nope. Eh. All right. Let me at least look at the waves. Eh. Thin. Nope. Nope. All right, a little bit more. Eh. Hmm. Two forty-eight. Target number. Ah. Oh. Oh. I feel a little dumb. Hmm. Oh well, I don't pay attention to the ruse. Screw the ruse! I just want to get this done. Because if we can find all the data, and hack on, hack down, eh, hack everything, we should be good with that and get an achievement. I'm not trying to at least go after the achievement, I'm trying to at least go after, like, the information that carries with it. <sighs> this is gonna be fun. Eh. Eh. God damn it. Yeah. Okay, go. <sighs> Gotta be careful. Because the lasers. Huh. <sighs> God damn it. Eh. Be. Convenient. Little convenient. Very convenient. I seem to convenient. And. Lasers. Pew. Come on, it and go. <sighs> okay. Almost there. It's almost amazing. Give it a lick. Mmm, it's like raisins. Eh. <sighs> All right. Good. 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 Bypassing the security, connecting successfully. Okay. Our initial research into the life of Ratana Gaiden focused on a period spanning his late teens. I'm going to say anything. I'm 30s. just going to stay quiet. But our researchers came away unimpressed by his calm and stoic demeanor, with occasional flashes of extreme anger. This was not the sort of leading man we felt comfortable endorsing. We decided, therefore, to delve into his early childhood, with the hope that scenes of pre-colonial America might hold some appeal. As you can see here, there is a certain naive charm and innocence to this young boy. 
Unfortunately, our researchers found this young man's story deeply problematic as well. For one, the omnipresence of the Mohawk culture lacks the balance necessary to tell the true story of really? America. And secondly, the Mohawk language would certainly be an issue for most of our audience. We therefore feel that although Rotana Tango's early life would be of some interest to our more educated viewers, it's unlikely that his story would appeal on a broader scale, being too foreign, as it were, to normal audiences. Uh -huh. Our team recommends we pass. Wait, 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 time out. Too foreign? I hate these guys. I guess... Whatever. I, I don't care anymore.